Hey, it's Shane with GotRom.com. This video is about morphology does not equal pathology, meaning if you have bad bone shapes, that does not mean you're going to have big hip problems. So obviously there are some people who do have abnormal morphology in their hips, abnormal bone shapes, and they do have big problems, but even then there's not a clear one-to-one -one connection that if you have abnormal bone shapes, you're going to have terrible hip problems. And obviously I am one example of that. I have FAI in my right hip, cam morphology, assist, labral damage, etc., etc. But I can do the splits, I can run, I can jump, I can cut, I can live an active life, and I don't have any problems. Now, the reason that I really want to talk about morphology does not equal pathology is I have started seeing some discussions around on the internet and such that very young children or young adults, you know, teenagers, 20-somethings, get a couple x-rays, a couple MRIs, maybe one or two orthopedic tests, and they find out, oh, you've got cam impingement, or you've got pincher impingement, or you've got something abnormal in your hip. It's not perfectly spherical. Your hip shape is not a perfect ball. And it's recommended to these people that you need to get surgery right away, as quickly as possible. The intervention needs to be complete and immediate. We have to change this bone shape, otherwise you're doomed. And this kind of concerns me, and, and I don't tend to delve into the scientific research and philosophies and all this abstract kind of stuff about the hips. All I want to do is share what I found helped me with my hip and the practical exercises that I found help people with their hips. I leave the intellectual debates to other people. I'm a very practical guy. But I do want to quote one scientific article, and I'll invite you to read the whole thing on your own. And it comes from a guy named David Rubin, and from the article FAI, Fact, Fiction, or Fantasy. Uh, David Rubin is a radiologist, and he's got a lot of great points. Not all of them are in favor of, you know, surgery for FAI is never a good thing, but a lot of his points are not. Surgery is always a good thing, so it seems like a pretty fair and balanced approach. And what he says here is, as is the case for all medical conditions, although radiologic findings may be necessary for a diagnosis of FAI syndrome, they are not sufficient for diagnosis without clinical signs or symptoms. Both radiologists and surgeons commonly overlook this fact with newly described entities, becoming enamored with the new measurements and criteria published nearly monthly. Just like every patient with positive ulnar variance of the wrist, does not have ulnocarpal impaction, and not every light-skinned individual has or will ever develop melanoma, not everyone with FAI morphology has or will develop the FAI syndrome. Additionally, even in patients with hip pain, with or without arthritis, the shape of the bones cannot be assumed to be the cause of FAI syndrome. Nevertheless, especially in the orthopedics community, once FAI became an explanation for hip pain in young patients, and the tools for treating it became commonplace, the defin definition and scope of the diagnosis expanded. As Bill Palmer aptly stated recently, optimism and opportunity have converted many orthoped orthopedic surgeons into FAI believers. Or, put another way, once you own a hammer, everything begins to look like a nail. So I really like that quote, and I like the whole article because like I said, it seems very fair and balanced. And what he's calling for and what I'm kind of calling for in this video is a balanced perspective of what population of people surgery is appropriate for. And it is appropriate for a certain population of people. There's people that I know who have greatly benefit, benefited from getting surgery on their hips. What I'm trying to convey and point out in this video is that these young people, upon getting just their first x-ray or MRI or a quick test from the physical therapist and they're told, you absolutely definitely need surgery that kind of scares me I think surgery should be the last option because it's the most invasive the most expensive and there's a lot there's a whole world of things that you can try before the surgery now I don't think you should be hard-headed and just think like surgery is always bad and it's not good for anyone either neither extremes are accurate in my view I'm always trying to find kind of the middle path and I think that there's a lot that you can do with massage, stretch, stretching, strengthening, exercise, physical therapy, stuff that we teach um, before you get to the place of surgery. 
And like I said, surgery will be necessary for some people, but it should be a last resort. So I'm gonna to link to that article. You can check it out and come to your own conclusions, but I just wanted to share that with you today, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, be cool, be cool, just move with me.